welcome students to another teaching and learning process on economics. I am Kolade Abiola, your instructor for today. You'll be listening to teaching on demand for money, supply of money, quantity theory of money. At the end of the lesson, the student will be able to define demand for money and mention motives for holding money and its determinants. Two, define supply of money and classify supply of money. Three, mention the main difference between M1 and M2 supply of money. Four, mention and explain determinants of supply of money. Five, state the quantity theory of money. Six, mention the variables of quantity of money. Demand for money is the total amount of money which all individuals in the economy wish to hold for various reasons and it is the desire to hold money. Motives for holding money. There are three motives for holding money. Transactionary motive, precautionary motive, speculative motive. Transactionary motive. This arises from the need to have cash or old money to meet everyday requirements and current transactions such as food, transport, and fuel. Precautionary motive. This is the desire on the part of the people to hold money to meet unforeseen or unexpected events such as sudden medical expenses, accident, and unexpected visitor. Speculative motive. This is associated with the purchase or sale of security such as bonds and shares or goods to make profit. People will hold more cash if they expect that the prices of security is going to fall and they will hold less cash if the prices of security will rise. The determinants of the motives are transactionary motive, one, size of income, two, interval between wage payment, three, family size, four, availability of credit, general price level and the rate of interest precautionary motive availability of credit size of income the rate of interest perception of risk interval between wage payments availability of social insurance and family size speculative motive rate of interest the degree of risk aversion supply of money is the total amount of money available for use in the economy at a given period of time it consists of m1 and m2 money supply m1 is the money supply that are very liquid in cash such as coins currency in circulation and demand deposits m2 is a money supply that is less liquid in nature and it includes m1 plus savings deposits time deposits money market securities the main difference between M1 and M2 money supply is that M1 is more limited and more liquid type of money, while M2 includes M1 and other less liquid forms of money. We can see that in a diagram.
Welcome back from that short break. We shall continue our discussion from supply of money. We want to classify supply of money using a diagram. So I want we want to do it together. Get your pencil and your ruler ready. So write supply of money, then classify it eight into two. M1, M2. Then M1 now consists coins, demand deposits, currency in circulation. M2 consists M1, money market security, time deposit, saving deposit. I hope you've gotten that. You've drawn your own at home. Fine, that's good. So let's look at determinants of supply of money. One, the bank rate or discount rate is the rate of interest the central bank charges commercial bank and other financial institution for lending money to or borrowing from them and discounting their bills. The central bank controls money supply by making variations in the bank rates. If it wants to increase money supply, it will reduce the bank rates and to reduce the money supply, the central bank will increase bank rates. Two, cash reserve or cash ratio. This is the percentage of the deposit commercial banks are required to keep with central bank. If the cash reserve is high, the supply of money will be low. And if the cash reserve is low, the supply of money will be high. Three, central bank total reserve. The central bank total reserve affects the supply of money in a country. If it is high, the supply of money will be low. And if it is low, the supply of money will be high. Four, the economic situation. The situation prevailing in the economy at time will determine the supply of money during the period of inflation. Central bank will reduce supply of money and increase it in a period of deflation. Five, demand for excess reserve. When commercial bank demand for excess reserve, the supply of money will increase. I hope you've gotten those points under determinants of supply of money. So we want to look at elementary quantity theory of money. The theory talks about the relationship between the quantity of money in circulation in an economy and the price level. The theory says that an increase in the quantity of money in circulation will bring about a proportionate rise in the price of goods and services. The theory was improved upon by Ivory Fisher. He introduces two variables. One, the volume of transaction, which is T. Two, the velocity of circulation. The theory is now expressed by an equation which is MV equals to 
PC. Welcome back from that short break. We shall continue our discussion on quantity theory of money. Before the short break, we have explained what the theory talks about. So we want to continue our discussion on how the theory can be expressed by an equation. It is expressed by an equation with MV equal PT. M is the total money in circulation, which consists of coins, banknotes, and bank deposits. V, velocity of circulation. MV, total amount of money used in a given period of time. P, price level. C, represent the total of all the transactions that have taken place with money during the given period. From the above equation, we can conclude that the value of money and the price can be influenced by the followings. One, the quantity of money in circulation. Two, the rate at which money circulates. That is, velocity of circulation of money. Three, the output of goods and services. Criticism against quantity theory of money. The quantity theory of money was criticized on the following points. One, the theory ignored rate of interest. Two, not acceptable as a theory because it only showed relationship between variable. That is M, V, P, and T. Three, ignoring the demand for money, but only discuss supply of money. Four, the four variables are independent of each other. Five, the theory does not show the value of money can be determined, but instead emphasize the changes in the value of money. We want to see some questions that you can practice at home. One, define demand of money. Two, Alight and explain the motives for holding money. Mention three determinants of each of motives for holding money. Define supply of money. Alight and explain determinants of supply of money. With the aid of a diagram, classify the supply of money. State the theory of quantity theory of money. And we can also visit our various platform created by Lagos State to ask questions. God bless you.